Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about intuition. And we're not going to do the regular, what is intuition? How to use your intuition? We're going to talk about the problem with intuition. And the way that I see it, two there problems with intuition. There may be a few more, but this is my video. So I'm going to look at two. Two problems of intuition, really simply, you don't hear it or you don't trust it. And it just so happens I was watching Minority Report this weekend. If you don't know what Minority Report is, it's a movie starring Tom Cruise and at some point ends up with one of the precogs. Well, what does that mean, Stephanie? What's a precog? In the video, in the video, in the movie, <laughs> Minority Report is very futuristic. And so there's this division of law enforcement called pre-crime. And what they do is that they stop crimes before they happen. And they do this because there are three individuals who have these amazing mental abilities called the precogs. And so a lot of things happen. I don't want to spoil the movie for you. It's very old, but it's really good. He ends up, Tom Cruise's character, ends up with one of the precogs. And so that being said, he literally has someone right here in his arms that can see the future. So as they're walking through the mall, she's telling people don't go home. He knows that all, she's just saying all of these things to him and to the people that are around because she can see what's going to happen. Now, I know a lot of people think that intuition is all about seeing the future and whatnot. I'm like, no, I, I really feel like our intuition guides us in the present. And so just like that precog that Tom Cruise is holding, because he's literally holding her like this because she's so weak um, as they walk through the mall and try to avoid his capture. Again, team, no spoilers. She's saying to him, wait, go, stop, throw this down. And literally he does everything that she says. But we don't. I can remember when my intuition said something to me to the effect of, mm, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> and I was like, well, why? And I guess that's the other problem, right? We're trying to judge it and figure it out. So I guess there's three problems now. But, you know, I think that the, the biggest challenge is that many times we're, we're, we're not listening. We're really... listening. We know too much. And as I've said in many other videos that, you know, it is not our job to know, it's our job to ask. But sometimes we're so caught up in, I know, I know, I know, I know that we don't bother to turn on the GPS. We've driven this route many times. Why turn on the GPS? And I'm like, well, because the GPS knows things that you don't. But our human arrogance likes for us to know things. So a lot of times we know. And so when we hear a voice or, or we have a feeling or something comes to us and we don't necessarily know what it is, I think a lot of times we just, we just don't listen. We don't necessarily heed what is being said because we know. And I'm like, yeah, it is so dangerous to know, right? And then the other part is something that I talked about and being taken for granted. And I think also you can find in the shorts collection. Yes, I have a shorts collection where you can look at all the shorts at one time. I truly believe it's probably one of the best playlists. If you're looking to be empowered on a daily basis, just check out the shorts collection. That's exactly what it's called. And so there'll probably be a link to it up above in my head somewhere in this area. So anyway, the other challenge is, is that, and, and this is the recovering people please are talking, is that when you've lived the vast majority of your life seeking external validation, having other people tell you what's right and wrong for you, you don't trust yourself, which means you can't trust your intuition because that, that's a part of you. And so you might be hearing things and feeling things, but you're not so sure if you can take that information as the truth. Because for so long, you've waited for people to tell you that's right. That's good. Bravo. That was excellent. And so if you're seeking that validation externally, it's very hard for you to recognize and, and respond to internal validation, which I think is, is definitely a part of intuition. Now, I know we could get into what is intuition and intuition versus sensing and all of this. I'm saying to you that there 
are things that know things that you don't. Like your human body is, is just that. You are a greater being, right? You, you have a spirit and you have a body. You're not a body that has a spirit. And so you, there are spiritual parts of you that know more than you do. And I think when they're attempting to download that into your mind, if you're not able to hear it, or if you're not able to trust it, then that leads me to the third problem that kind of just slid in here, which is you'll try to judge it or you'll try to justify it. And I've been so guilty of that. And I'm like, listen, sometimes you just have to let it be. Now, we're going to talk about some other things this week about overthinking and, and, and a lot of other things. But here's what happened to me. I was, I was actually, I was, I was actually um, enrolling a client and something just didn't feel right. And I just kept saying, oh, stop being ridiculous. It's going to be fine. You know, what is this feeling? And because I couldn't identify the feeling, like I couldn't say what the feeling wanted or what the feeling meant, I disregarded it. And I would end up later with a really challenging situation with that same client. If I just would have heeded what I was feeling, that, that discomfort, then I think that would have been better. Because at least if nothing else, I think it, it merits a pause. And sometimes we don't want to do that because we're, we're in the middle of our thing. We know. And so we know how to move forward. And so that thing that we're feeling, that discomfort, sometimes we just minimize it or we judge it or we justify it. Like, oh, you're just being silly. Oh, well, maybe you ate bad food. Maybe you got a little food poisoning. You try to justify it because a lot of times we don't want to take the pause. I'm like, there's power in the pause though. Had I paused, I wouldn't have had that situation that I had. I'm just saying. So at the end of the day, I think there are two problems with intuition and we can overcome them, right? Because if we're not listening, then we can start to listen more. We can say, hey, I, I don't really know what this intuition thing is, but I want to try to be more in tune. So, and there are some other ways that you can do that. You know, maybe, maybe you're not going to hear a quiet little voice. You may not hear the still voice in your head, but you know, your body will tell you the, the energy will tell you if you start to do something, you feel tense. A lot of times what I will tell people very succinctly, let peace guide you. If you feel at peace about something, then it's probably definitely for you to do. And if you don't feel at peace, then you should probably pause at least until you feel peaceful about it. And then additionally, you know, learning to trust yourself starts with recognizing that you have full capability of validating yourself. Yes, I know you may have lived a life where you were externally validated, where you were people pleasing, where you were trying to get applause and all of this, but you can stop that anytime. You really can. You can stop that at any time and say self and self says, hmm, I want to validate myself. I want to hear from myself. I want to be in alignment with myself. I want to be in alignment with the divine design for my life. I, I want all of that. And you can just say that. And then, you know, again, there's, there's nothing wrong with seeking external validation, sort of. The problem comes when that's all we seek and that's all we need and that's how we live our lives. And I know a lot of people, myself included, who have made decisions based on how they thought others would see us. So that's, that's you being a good guy or being a good, being a good girl or, or a good husband, a good wife. And there's nothing wrong with being a good anything except that, unfortunately, when people start being good, that tends to lean more toward the martyr side of things. I have yet to meet a person that is being good in balance. Well, I guess I've met myself now. So I guess that'll, that'll count. But it took time for me to recognize how to be good for me and in balance with me and others. So at, at this point, you know, I've often said this though, I'm just gonna be honest. Um, there's really no such thing as good. It's about what's good for me. That doesn't harm anyone because I'm not talking about being malicious and cutthroat and sociopathic. I'm saying that what's good for me usually is going to be what's good. Some people will not agree with my decisions. Okay, that doesn't stop me from making them anymore. And I mean, even if you look at the video where I talk about quitting my job, my 11 year career as a college professor, um, I had to shut out all the voices. 
even the ones that would probably support me, I had to shut out all the voices because I needed to go within. Like, listen, going within is a real thing. You can get answers there. And again, if you've been seeking external validation, you may not feel comfortable doing that. You may say, well, I feel, but I don't know. But it's a muscle. It, it won't grow unless you flex it and use it. And I will say in the beginning, when you start to learn to trust yourself, um, make sure that you're connected to people that you can go to, that will be unbiased, that will hold you accountable to trusting yourself. I, I had someone in my life at some point and they would come to me and they would say, what do you think about this? And me knowing that they were seeking the external validation because they hadn't learned to trust themselves, I would say, what do you think? Let me validate you in your thought process. What do you think? And he would sit back and he would say, well, I think this. And I said, well, how does that feel? It feels good. Well, then go for it. Notice how I never, ever gave them my opinion, you know, because usually we were in sync. So whatever he thought, I thought so. Okay. But I, I wanted to be a person where it was okay for you to trust yourself, for you to internally validate. So I'm saying to you, if you haven't done that and you're starting to do it, make sure that you find someone that can be safe space for you that will hold you to that, that will not give you the easy way out and tell you what they think and you can take that in. And now you're thinking about all these different things and, and, and trying to please them even subconsciously, but you're actually connected to someone that will say, hey, go within. I trust your opinion for yourself. I trust your thoughts. I trust your strategy. I trust whatever you're going to do is the right thing for you. That sounds amazing, right? If you think about it, having people in your life that will do that for you, that sounds amazing. Anyway, those are my problems with intuition. And that's all I have to say about that. My name is Stephanie D. McKenzie. I'm a speaker, teacher, author, and coach here to remind you to always be your own superhero and to thank you guys for loving and learning and using your intuition with me. See you on the next video.